Hi, grade 10s. In today's lesson, we will join Eloise and Rifile as they show us how to calculate the distance or length of a line segment between two points using the distance formula. Let's have a look. We want to be able to calculate the distance between any two points. Okay, I remember how to describe the points. But how do we find the distance between them? Here is something that will help us answer this question. I can make a right-angled triangle from any slanted line. Yeah, that might just help us. I remember that there's some very important things to remember about right-angled triangles. You might remember the man of mathematics, Pythagoras. One of the most useful ideas that Pythagoras wrote down for us is a way to calculate the sides of a right-angled triangle. If this is my triangle with angle C, 90 degrees, and I don't know how long the line AB is, I can work it out like this. AB squared equals AC squared plus BC squared. Suppose I give you AC equal to 8 and BC equal to 6. We substitute into Pythagoras' theorem and square the brackets. AC is 8 and BC is 6. So AB squared is equal to 64 plus 36. AB squared is equal to 100. I love it when the sum comes out with such easy numbers. Of course, you know, this was planned. But we want AB, not AB squared. To get AB, you have to find the square root of 100. The square root of 100 can be 10 or it can be negative 10. Which answer makes sense to you, Rafilwe? AB is a line, a length, and a distance. I don't see how we can have a negative length, so it must be 10. You're right. AB is 10, and all thanks to Pythagoras. Now, have a look at this. I will take the same triangle ABC and place it in the Cartesian plane. We are going to use Pythagoras' theorem to work out a distance formula to use on the Cartesian plane. I could place triangle ABC anywhere on the plane. I have placed it with A at the point 2, 1. I have made this triangle to scale so one unit in the Cartesian plane is equal to one unit on the right-angled triangle. If the coordinates of A are 2, 1, then the coordinates of B will be 10, 7, and the coordinates of C will be 10, 1. We know that BC is 6 units long. BC lies on the line where the X value is 10 all the way. If you look at the Y value of B, it is 7, and the Y value of C is 1, and they lie under each other. 7 minus 1 is 6, which is the length of BC. We know that AC is 8 units long. The X value of A is 2, and the X value of C is 10. A and C lie on this line where Y is 1 all the way. 10 minus 2 gives me 8. So AC is 8 units long. Do you see that the difference between the Y value at B and the Y value at C is the same as the length of BC? And the length of AC is equal to the second X value minus the first X value. Now Pythagoras said that AB squared is equal to AC squared plus BC squared. We found that AC was 10 minus 2 and BC was 7 minus 1. If we substitute, we find that AB squared equals 10 minus 2 squared plus 7 minus 1 squared. That gives us 8 squared plus 6 squared, which is what we worked out for the triangle before. 
we found that AB is 10 units. So where does all that leave us? Well, now we can use this formula for distance on any line segment. Instead of using specific numbers, we can replace the numbers with the letters X and Y. Have a look at this triangle ABC again. I will replace each number with an X or a Y. Let's write X1, Y1 for the coordinates of A here below 2, 1. Let's label the coordinates at B, X2 and Y2. But we have another point on the triangle that is important as well. It is point C here. Look carefully, it will have the same X value as point B, so its X value can be labeled X2. It will have the same Y value as point A here, so we can label it Y1. The Y value of A is Y1, and the Y value of B is Y2. The X value of A is X1, and the X value of B is X2. Then AC equals X2 minus X1, and BC equals Y2 minus Y1. So AB squared is X2 minus X1 all squared, plus Y2 minus Y1 all squared. But we want the length of AB, not AB squared, so we must square root both sides. So AB equals the square root of X2 minus X1 all squared plus Y2 minus Y1 all squared. Because we didn't use specific numbers, we can see that your formula works for all line segments. We can also see how coordinate geometry uses both geometry and algebra. Here is a useful tip. When you find the distance between two points, you must be careful about labeling the points. The x and y value from point 1 must be x1 and y1, and the x and y value from point 2 must be x2 and y2. Oh, I see. So if you substitute the coordinates into the wrong place, then the formula will give you the wrong answer. Yes, that's what I mean. Now let's test it out on another line segment. Why don't you pick one this time? Okay, I want to find the length of a line from here to here. From 3, 4, which I'll call Q. To negative 1, 2, which I'm going to call P. Great. I see your point P has a negative X value. This will be a good example because it shows that this formula works for negative values and for positive values anywhere. Let's plot them in the Cartesian plane. P would be here and Q would be here. So PQ is the line segment joining P and Q. Let's label P with X1 and Y1. Then Q's coordinates will be X2 and Y2. I substitute the numbers into the formula 1 by 1 and PQ equals the square root of 3 minus negative 1 squared plus 4 minus 2 squared. So PQ equals the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared which is the square root of 16 plus 4, which is the square root of 20. Now my calculator will tell me that the answer is approximately 4.47, rounded off to two decimal places. Rafilwe, do you think that your answer is reasonable? Well, the square root of 25 is 5, so the square root of 20 must be a bit less than that. It seems that the formula really does work. This method can be used in a number of situations. You might like to practice some of these using some of the tasks in the Introducing Analytical Geometry task video. Let's point you in the right direction so you can go the distance.